Most of your Christians or so-called Christians don't want the truth. They want whatever makes them feel comfortable, whatever uh, that goes along with the uh, the crowd uh, in the church uh, or the denomination or whatever, the congregation they belong to, what they believe. They don't want to believe the truth. They're so whitewashed into believing this uh, uh, church mentality that really doesn't line up with the Bible, which brings me to this. At least things are seem to be changing. Uh, Rabbi Schneider, I think his name is Kurt Schneider, um, he was preaching on uh, he was uh, that there is no pre-trib rapture. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And there isn't no pre-trib rapture. Whoever told you the pre-trib rapture told you the lie. Now, they don't know it's a lie because it's been passed down to them, <clears throat> but that doesn't line up with the Bible. And I'll preach more on it, but I'll give you an example. Um were uh, when all the plagues were happening to Egypt, where were the children of Israel? Where were the Israelites? They were still in Egypt. Egypt is a world. So when all this stuff comes down uh, in the tribulation period, we're going to be like uh, Israel. We're still going to be in the world, folks. Now, if nobody, if you don't want to believe that, go ahead and believe the lie. That's what I tell everybody. It's okay. You're not. You're not unsaved or anything. But you need to seek out the truth, and you need to ask the Holy Spirit to show you the truth. Get rid of all this pride and all this junk, church junk they put into you, and the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. So Snyder this morning was preaching on that. I told uh, Carol, my wife, I said, you know, it sounds like uh, he's been watching my videos. <laughs> you know, I'm just being a little facetious here. <clears throat> but then the next guy that came on, because we're getting ready for church, was uh, Robert Morris. And Robert Morris was, he was preaching uh, a lot of the same things I've been preaching for years. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, I preached on the uh, lying uh, spirits in the mouths of prophets. How many of y'all remember that? Wave your hand. Well, that's what Robert Morris taught on this morning. Lying spirits in the mouth of prophets. Now, is Robert Morris going up and seeing my videos? Probably not, but I don't know. So things are kind of changing, so there is still some hope for, for the church, but um, there's times when I just get uh, frustrated with it. And I really want to uh, really want to kind of be like Jesus when he said, let the dead bury the dead, you know? <laughs> That's it. Let the dead churches bury the dead people in the churches, you know? That's the way I feel about it. But uh, I can't stop because the Lord won't let me. You know, it's kind of like uh, what Peter told Jesus, you know, and Jesus said, you're going to leave me too? And he says, where are we going to go? You got the words of life. You got the truth. That's where I'm at. And it's between a rock and a hard place. And most Christian people, and even some of those that want to be ministers, are not be, uh, between the rock and the hard place. And I'm going to tell you that you need to be between the rock and the hard place. Because if you're not, you will quit also. You'll get on down the line, and people will just frustrate you. They won't show up. They'll ask a question. You preach on it, and they weren't even there. They come in late. They uh, make some kind of excuses not to show up when you set up a, a, a deliverance session for them. And it goes on and on and on and on. Now, if you're not between the rock and the hard place, you will quit. I'm telling you that as a warning. You will quit. Why? Because you know this life that's so much easier. See? That's what the uh, church leaders, they know this, they're like politicians. They have this life that's so much easier. This life isn't uh, a life between the rock and the hard place. And that's the same thing with politicians. They're not like some of us because they got it made. Well, a lot of these church people are like that. They don't have to preach the truth. They still have their, uh, you know, uh, $500,000 or $250,000 a year, whatever it is coming in. They still got their mansions. They still got their big cars. They can still go on TV. And I saw another preacher that came on just before he left. And when he holds up his hands to speak, he's filled with all these diamond rings and all this. How many diamond rings did Jesus wear? And I'm not against diamond rings. I actually own a couple of them. But that was like show. He was like showing his hands that he's successful. And if you want to be successful like him, you've got to do what he says to do. What is that? Control, manipulation, mm -hmm. and witchcraft. Comes from the devil. It's a bunch of lies. And until the church people wake up and see this. Now, 
here's what I fear <clears throat> for them. They're not going to wake up in time. Yeah. You know, if the Lord decided to come next week, it's too late for a lot of them. It's too late to wake up and realize we've been lied to. And you have. And the devil, don't, don't underestimate him. The father of lies, man, he's infiltrated the church and filled them with so many lies. Uh, another thing Snyder was saying this morning was something I've said years ago. He was showing that the King James Bible is not the only Bible. You know, uh, he taught on a message I taught on years ago. Now, I'm not saying that he's <clears throat> he taught on it because I taught on it. The Holy Spirit probably gave it to him. But, you know, like the word Easter, and we see all these churches going to have their Easter celebration and their Easter egg hunt. The word Easter in the King James really is a false definition of mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Passover. Mm-hmm. And we, Carol and I, a few years back, went down to a church in Alabama, and that preacher says, yeah, uh, but if you're going to preach here, you're going to have to preach out of King James. That's the only Bible. And I knew that that was wrong. And I, no one ever told me that. The Holy Spirit revealed it to me. King James is the only Bible? He was absolutely wrong. But you could not get in his pulpit and preach unless you had a King James. He even gives me one. It was one of them giveaway Bibles. You know, here, Here's your Bible. I'm thinking, man, I got... Ten of them, you know, I don't need another King James, you know. So, I mean, see the falseness and see the stupidity of it and see the lack of knowledge of it. The church is like a house of cards, you know, just been waiting for, for Satan to come along and blow it down. And he will. And I'm afraid we might be too late. I, I don't know. Um, that's between that's up to the Lord, you know. But that's a, a fearful thought because a lot of people sitting in these churches aren't saved because they've been lied to. Let me explain yeah. something to you, too. The Bible says liars will not make it into the kingdom. It's in the book of Revelations, and it's plain old King James English. But liars will not make it into the kingdom. Do you know what that means? You aren't going to see very, you're going to see very few politicians there. You won't see the presidents of the United States there. You won't see these people who lie to the people. And you mm -hmm. ain't going to see a lot, as many pastors and uh, church leaders as you think you're going to see there. Why? Because they lie. And they know they're lying. Mm -hmm. They just think it's okay. It, uh, God's grace, God's mercy, I'll be forgiven. Everything's fine. The main thing is to keep the church big and prosperous and the money rolling in. Yep. Didn't Jesus say you can't serve two masters? Yes, sir. Mam uh, mammon or uh, or God, because you love one and hate the other. Well, guess which one they love? Mm -hmm. So if they love money, that means they hate Christ. They don't even know it. S see how this works? This is quite simple. Get the infilling of the Holy Spirit and ask him to show you the truth, and then you'll walk in truth, no matter what it is. Oh, you'll may, you may fall once in a while and make a few mistakes, but don't he'll correct those mistakes, just like... Um, Schneider's correcting um, some of those things about um, a pre-trib rapture. And he even said something I said, uh, uh, I don't know, months ago, actually years ago, but I retaught it recently, that Jesus is coming in the last trump, not the first trump. And when he said that, I thought, wow, you know. So maybe, maybe the church is going to come along because Robert Morris is talking about uh, the demonic and so forth, and... Uh, Snyder's talking about, um, you know, when the uh, uh, rapture is going to come and, and, and what have you. And, and, and they, were they were both uh, putting out truth, according to the Bible. And I knew it. So anyway, um, the church as we know it really is going to have to disappear. I'm sorry. I just heard that from the Holy Spirit. The church as we know it, as a whole, not every local body, I'm sure, the Holy Spirit said, yeah, that's for sure. But the church as a whole is going to have to disappear. How will it disappear? I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell me. He says they're going to disappear because they're going to go on, on the other side. They're going to be people taking the mark of the beast. They're going to be those that are going to be against the true Christians. That's how they'll disappear. In other words, God will remove them. And I'm waiting. And many of them, he says, will be removed for all eternity. That's sad, folks. Spend all your life going to some church, and then you end up in hell. 
because you were lied to. And you believe the lie because you didn't go and find out what the real truth is. See, if you believe a lie, then you're with the liars. Think about it. And if you're with the liars, then you may not make it yourself. That's why Jesus is coming for the few and for the remnant.